Sharkly gee, I said, shocked. Oh, so you have heard of me, the man said. That is good. Come, join my entourage to Uruk. Still shocked, I followed them. I didn't know what else to do. Sharkly gee didn't seem to know me. Maybe he wouldn't try to harm me. Still, I couldn't stop thinking about what he did to my daughter as she was a baby. If it wasn't for Shark Ligi, David wouldn't have had to sacrifice himself to save Aura. But he seems harmless now. As we traveled through the desert, I tried to figure out where I was. I remembered what David had told me about the man. Apparently, he was a Sumerian prince that had magic. Maybe I am an ancient Sumer. Remembering what I had learned about world history, I realized what time period I was in. It is about 4,000 BC. Somehow I had traveled back in time 6,000 years. It must have been when I looked at that faraway bottle as Emma was flying at me. I must have looked at a moment when Shark Ligi was alive before the magic consumed him. Now I found myself somewhere in the ancient Middle East, 4,000 BC, somewhere on my way to Uruk. As we traveled, the sun began to... As we traveled, the sun began to set. Shark Ligi ordered his men to set up camp and start a campfire. As the campfire began to heat us up, since it began to be very cold in the night, Shark Ligi began to question me. So, Autumn, where are you from? It is a faraway land. We call it America, I said. I see. Your clothes look very foreign to me. It is of the strangest cloth. You look like some type of foreigner I have never seen before. Is America in the land north? No, I said. Is it further north, past the mountains? No, it is pretty far from here. It is in a northwest direction from here, although very far to the west. Far to the west? Do you live with the men of Jericho? No, even further west. Even further west? But there is a sea even further west. I tried to think of my directions and knowledge of geography. If you keep going, you will eventually reach land. There past the sea is America. That is far away. Is America filled with many barbarians? No, I wouldn't say so. Everyone lives in cities and towns. Everyone? How many cities does America have? Oh, millions, I guess. Some big, some small. Millions? That must be a lie, Autumn. I do not like lies. Well, I guess I have broken an ancient man's brain. I promise you, I am not lying. Well then, why is an American all the way out here? You are far away from your homeland. Are you a diplomat for the king of America? No, I said. Not sure if I should also mention that America also doesn't have a king. I'm not a diplomat. I'm a regular citizen. To answer why I am here, I think I got here by accident. That much is true. I found you wandering around aimlessly. How did you get here by accident? He asked. I guess I got here by magic, I said, not sure what his reaction would be. His face changed. Magic? What type of magic? Natural magic, I said. He looked around, almost like he was scared if anyone heard him. He leaned into me and whispered, If only you told me you use natural magic, I would have done this differently. You are a special woman. Suddenly I heard a screech from far away in the darkness. I looked over there and saw this big bright light. It seemed to be growing bigger and bigger. It was a large white light. As I got closer, I realized what it was. It was Emma. She had found me. I saw her face with her pure white eyes. She was screaming so loudly. What is that? Shark Kaligi asked. It's Emma. She found me. I'm so sorry. I thought I escaped her, I tried to explain. What is an Emma? He asked. Before I could respond, I tried to run away again. I had to escape her. Unfortunately, there was no escape for me. Emma caught up to me and grabbed me. Within moments, she flew me on the floor. Within moments, she threw me on the floor. I recognized where I was now. I was back in the land of time. Emma had brought me back here. You will die, she shouted. She then looked at me in pure anger. She looked around and saw, I looked around and saw another bottle of time. I closed my eyes and focused on my magic. I heard her scream as she flew towards me, and then silence. I opened my eyes to find myself in a forest. It was nighttime. 
I saw a campfire nearby. I walked towards it to see a singular man by the campfire. Who is it? The man said, and he looked at me. Oh, it is you, Autumn. I'm so glad to see you. It was sharply he. He was very he was wearing very different clothes. He looked different too. Hi, where am I? When am I? Oh, you've traveled through time? I understand. Come sit with me. I did so, still very confused. Autumn, it is good to see you. Let me help you understand everything. By the looks of your clothing, I'm guessing you are from around the year 2000. Well, it is now the year 8000. Modern society as you know it collapsed before the end of the 21st century, forcing everyone to return to more traditional ways of life. It is an interesting thing to see from my point of view. People may change, but the old ways are always there for you. They are just consistently reliable. Right now, we are living right where the ancient city of New York was. So civilization has collapsed, I asked. No, I would not say that. Modern civilization did, but human civilization continued. Just like before modernity, humanity continues. A lot has happened. Empires have risen and fallen. Cultures have emerged and dissipated. People have lived their lives like how most of humanity has. I see. Am I still alive? Oh yes, every magical person is alive. Thanks to you, I have my body again. You know, I have not seen you in a couple centuries. Even though you have not done this yet, I am thankful that you gave me my body back. My time as a spirit was miserable. Now with my body, I am complete. I smiled and nodded, trying to take all this in. I looked into the fire, trying to relax. But before I could relax, I heard a screeching from afar. I looked over there and saw a big bright light. It was Emma again. She found me. Oh no, I said, exhausted. What is it? Sharkaligi asked. Oh, I see. Do not worry, I believe in you. You can defeat this threat. You have time, Magic Autumn. You can do this. Thank you, I said. As Emma got closer, I decided not to run. Firstly, because I was becoming tired, but secondly, because I did not want to run anymore. Like it or not, I had to face Emma. I had to save her so that David could be saved. I had to face her. So I accepted my fate. She grabbed me and threw me on the floor again, pulling us back into the land above time. I stood up and looked at her. Finally, you will die, she shouted. She then flew at me. Instead of looking for a way to escape, I looked at her and closed my eyes. I focused my mind and stretched out my arms as if I was to stop her. As I kept my eyes closed, I heard a loud bang. I opened my eyes. I was surrounded by a big blue force field. The field bounced Emma back. She fell back, surprised. She tried again, flying right towards me. I focused my mind and outstretched my arms. Again, she flew right back from the force field. Furious, she tried a third time. She flew so fast, she broke the sound barrier. However, not even that broke my force field. She bounced back to the bottom of the marble throne. She did not get up. I separated my force field and ran towards her. She was laying on the floor, but still breathing. Emma, are you okay? I asked cautiously. She turned over. Her eyes and hair were back to normal. Autumn, you saved me. Oh, good. Can you save David? No, Autumn, she said, her voice weak. No, but I thought you were going to save David. I can't save him, Autumn, but you can. You have the natural magic of time. Autumn, you can save David. Not only that, but you can do it right here, right now. Wait, really? Yes. You can save your husband right now.